Let's write the code for a constant product AMM. A constant product AMM will take in two tokens. These two tokens will be ERC20. So first, let's import our IERC20, an interface to ERC20, which I've already declared it here. So back inside my constant product AMM, first thing that I'll do is import the IERC20.soul that I declared over here. So I'll type import from the current directory, import IERC20.soul. Next, we'll declare some state variables and then write the constructor. This contract will take in two tokens, so I'll declare IERC20 public immutable. Immutable because the tokens will not change after we set the tokens inside the constructor. So immutable token zero. And likewise, IERC20 public immutable token one. These are the two tokens that this constant product AMM will be trading. We'll set these two tokens inside the constructor. So let's write a constructor. Say constructor, and it's going to take in the two address of token zero and token one. Address underscore token zero and address underscore token one. Inside the constructor, we'll initialize token zero and token one. So I'll say token zero is equal to IERC20 token zero from the input. And likewise, token one is equal to IERC20 from token one from the input. Okay, let's continue on with declaring other state variables. This contract will keep an internal balance of the two tokens. So I'll type uint public reserve zero and uint public reserve one. I named these two state variables, state variables that keep track of how much token zero and token one is inside this contract, reserve zero and reserve one, because this is how it is named inside Uniswap v2 contract. When a user provides or removes liquidity, we'll need to mint or burn shares. So we'll declare some state variables. We'll say that the total share will be stored in uint public total supply and the share per user we will store in the mapping mapping from address to uint public balance of and that completes the state variables that we're going to need for this example next let's write some internal function to mint and burn shares the next function that i'm going to write is an internal function to mint shares so i'll type function underscore mint it's going to take in two parameters, the address to mint to and the amount. Address underscore to uint amount. This function will be internal, so I'll declare it as private. And to mint shares, we'll increment the balance of for the to address by the amount, amount from the input. And we also increment the total supply. So total supply increment it plus equals by the same amount. And this completes the internal function to mint shares. Next, let's write an internal function to burn shares, decrementing shares from a user. I'll copy the mint function, and then we'll rename this to underscore burn, the address to burn the shares from, the amount will be the same, and rename to to from, and instead of incrementing, we'll decrement the shares and the total supply. And that completes the two internal function to mint shares and burn shares. Okay, moving on, let's write the function that the users will be able to call. So this will be function swap. For now, we won't worry about the inputs or the outputs. We'll just declare some functions. So users can call swap to do a trade between token zero and token one or from token one to token zero. Also declare this as external so that the solidity still compiles. We also need a function to add liquidity external user will be able to provide two tokens into this contract to add liquidity and earn some fees by calling add liquidity this will also mint shares to the user and the opposite of add liquidity is to remove liquidity so function remove liquidity external users that add tokens to this contract are called liquidity providers 
And once they have shares, these liquidity providers can call the function remove liquidity to withdraw their tokens and some fees that accrued from a trade. These are the three functions that the users will be able to call on this contract. Let's write the function for swap first. The function swap will take in two parameters. The address of the token to sell, we will name this token in, and this will have to be either token 0 or token 1. And the amount that they are selling, uint amount in. And then we will return the amount of other token that the user gets back. So returns uint amount out. We will first check the inputs, make sure that token in is either token 0 or token 1, and also check that amount in is greater than 0. So I'll type require token in is either equal to address of token zero or token in is equal to address of token one. If token in is not equal to token zero and token in is not equal to token one, then this will return an error with the message invalid token. Next, we'll require that the amount in is greater than zero. So require amount in greater than zero. With the error message, amount in is equal to zero. Before we move on and write any more code, let's think through what this function needs to do. First, we'll need to pull in the token that the caller is selling. I'll type pull in token in. And then we'll need to calculate token out. And this would include fees. We'll say that the fee is 0.3% of amount in. And then we'll need to transfer token out to message.sender. And then we'll need to update the reserves. So this will be reserve 0 and reserve 1. Okay, so these are the comments. Let's now write the code. Now notice that we're pulling token in and then transferring token out. But from our inputs token in, we don't know if token in is token 0 or if it's token 1. So first, let's write some code to figure out whether token in is token 0 or whether it is token 1. So I'll create a boolean called is token 0. And this is equal to whether the input token in is equal to address of token 0. Once we know whether token in is token 0 or token 1, we can now figure out what token in and token outs are. So I'll declare IERC20 token in and IERC20 token out is equal to if token in is token 0, so is token 0 question mark. Actually, I'll put the question mark here. If token in is token 0, then token in over here will be token 0 and token out will be token 1. Otherwise, it will be the other way around. So token 1, token 0. So now that we declared a local variable token in and token out, we can now write some code to pull in the tokens and then transfer the tokens out. So I'll type token in dot transfer from from message dot sender to this contract. So address this for the amount, amount in. And we also know what token out is. So let's complete this part of the code. Transfer token out to message.sender. I'll type token out dot transfer to message.sender for amount out. Now we don't know what amount out is yet, but we already have declared it over here. So inside this function, we don't need to declare amount out as something like uint amount out because we have already declared it inside the output of the function swap uint amount out. Okay, so inside the swap function, we transfer token in and transfer token out. Next, we'll calculate the amount of tokens to transfer out to message.sender. When we worked out the math for how much tokens that go out, we derived the equation that the amount of tokens that go out, dy, is equal to this equation over here. y times dx divided by x plus dx. y is the amount of token out that is locked inside this contract. dx is the amount of token in that came in. And x is the amount of token in that is locked inside this contract before the swap. So we'll implement this part of the equation to calculate the amount of tokens that go out, dy. 
But before we do that, let's compute the amount of tokens that came in minus the fee of 0.3%. So I'll type uint amount in with fee is equal to amount in times 99.7, so 997, and divided by 1000. 999 divided by 1000 is 99.7, and effectively we are charging a fee of 0.3% from a mountain. Okay, once we have a mountain, we can now implement this part of the code to calculate amount out. So amount out is equal to y will be reserve out and x will be reserve in. But we have not declared these variables yet. So before we complete this part of the code, let's declare the variables reserve in and reserve out. Back where we check token in and token out, we'll say uint reserve in and uint reserve out. If token in is token zero, then reserve in is reserve zero and the token that is going out. So reserve out will be reserve one. I made a spelling mistake over here. So I'll remove the R. Otherwise, it will be the other way around. So reserve in will be reserve one and reserve out will be reserve zero. Okay, so now we declare reserve in and reserve out. So we can continue ca calculating amount out. Amount out is equal to reserve out times the amount that came in will be amount in with fee and then we'll need to divide this by reserve in plus amount in with fee so i'll type reserve in plus amount in with fee and that completes amount out we just implemented this equation and the last step of the swap is to update the reserves now we're going to be updating the reserve also when we call the function add liquidity and remove liquidity. So first, let's implement the internal function that will update the two reserves. I'll scroll up and then declare an internal function. Function, I'll name it underscore update. It's gonna take in two inputs, the values for the new reserves. Uint, I'll name it underscore reserve zero and uint underscore reserve one. This will be a private function. And what they will do is update the reserves. Reserve 0 is equal to the new reserve 0 from the input. And likewise, reserve 1 is equal to the new reserve from the input. Okay, so let's continue finishing the function swap. The last step of the function swap is to update the reserve. So underscore update and we'll update the reserve to be the actual balance of token 0 and token 1. I'll type token 0 dot balance of address this and likewise reserve 1 will be updated to the actual balance of token 1. Token 1 dot balance of address this. Now why are we keeping track of the amount of token 0 and token 1 internally in a state variable called reserve zero and reserve one. Well, we are doing this so that users cannot directly send token zero and token one to mess up the balance of the two tokens. And if they were able to directly manipulate the balance of token zero and token one, then they might be able to mess up the swaps and the amount of shares to mint and burn. So that is why we're keeping an internal track of amount of tokens inside this contract. And that completes the function for swap. Let's move on and write the function for add liquidity. Okay, let's think through what the function add liquidity should do. When a user calls the function add liquidity, we'll pull in two tokens, token zero and token one, and then mint shares. So I'll put some comments, pull in token zero and token one. Next, we'll mint shares. And lastly, we'll update reserves. So for the input, we'll take in the amount of token 0 and token 1 to pull from the user. uint amount 0 and uint amount 1. And then we'll return the amount of shares that was minted. Returns uint shares. So first, let's pull in token 0 and token 1 from the user. So token 0 dot transfer from message dot sender address this for amount amount zero. 
and likewise for token one. Token one transfer from message dot sender to this contract for the amount amount one. Now at this point, the user can add any amount of token zero and token one. But if they do that, then this will mess up the price of the tokens. So after we pull in the amounts, let's make sure that the price of the tokens has not changed yet. In the previous video about math, we derived that the amount of tokens that the users can add to liquidity without changing the price must follow this condition. The amount of token one that comes in over the amount of token zero that comes in must be equal to reserve one over reserve zero. And this is a restriction if reserve zero or reserve one is not equal to zero. So I'll type if reserve zero is greater than zero or reserve one is greater than zero, then we'll implement this check. Require reserve zero times amount one that came in must be equal to reserve one times amount zero. What I'm doing here is instead of dividing and getting dy over dx, I'm multiplying dy times x and then y by dx. If this check does not hold, this means that by adding liquidity, the user can change the price of the token. So we'll say the error message is equal to dy over dx is not equal to y over x. The next step is to mint shares. Now in the previous video about math, we defined that we're going to measure liquidity by taking the square root of x times y. And then we also derived that the amount of shares to mint s is equal to dx divided by x times t the total supply the total shares and this is equal to dy divided by y times total shares so first i'm going to declare an internal function called square root so i'll copy a square root function that i found from the internet and then paste it here this square root function i copied it from the uniswap code base and we now have a way to implement this part of the code let's write the code to calculate the amount of shares to make we're going to be implementing this part of the code. For shares to mint, there are two parts. If total shares is equal to zero and when total share is greater than zero. So I'll type if total supply, total supply keeps track of the total shares is equal to zero. Then we'll say that the amount of shares to mint shares is equal to square root of the amount that came in. That will be amount zero times amount one. Otherwise, we can use this equation to calculate the amount of shares to mint. Shares is equal to, now notice that dx divided by x times t is equal to dy divided by y times t. So we can use either of these equations, but for safety, we'll take the minimum of these two calculation. So first I'll declare an internal function called function underscore min. This will take in two inputs, u and x and u int y. This function will return the minimum of x and y. Private peer returns u int and we'll say return if x is less than or equal to y then return x otherwise y is smaller so return y. Now that we have a function called min we're now ready to implement this part of the code by saying min of amount zero times total supply divided by reserve zero. And this part of the expression will be amount one times total supply divided by reserve one. Next, we'll check that the amount of shares to min is greater than zero. Require shares greater than zero, else shares is equal to zero. And then we'll mint the shares by typing, by using the internal function mint that we declared above, mint to message.sender for the amount shares. And lastly, we'll update the reserves. So I'll type update. And then again, we'll use the actual balance of the tokens, token zero dot balance of address this and token one dot balance of address this. 
Again, we're keeping track of the reserves internally and then only updating the reserves to actually match the actual balance of token 0 and token 1 after the function is called. And this is done for security purpose. If we were to mint the shares using the values of token 0 dot balance of this contract or token 1 balance of this contract, then the user might be able to mint more shares than what we actually want them to. So, so we're keeping track of reserve 0 and reserve 1, mostly for security reasons. We don't want the user to directly send tokens and manipulate with the shares and the price that is kept inside this contract. And that completes the function add liquidity. Let's move on and write our final function remove liquidity. So the function remove liquidity, let's first think of what this function needs to do before we write any code. We'll need to calculate amount 0 and amount 1 to withdraw. So this will be amount 0 and amount 1 to transfer back to the users for burning shares. So the input will be uint shares that is provided by the user and we'll return the actual amount of token 0 and token 1 that was transferred over to the user. Returns uint amount 0 and uint amount 1. Once we know the amounts of token 0 and token 1 to withdraw to the user, at some point we'll have to transfer it. So transfer tokens to message.sender. We'll also need to update the reserves and burn the shares, but we probably want to do that before we transfer the tokens to message.sender. So I'll type burn shares and update reserves. Okay, so we're now ready to write the code. Let's start off by calculating amount 0 and amount 1 to transfer back to the user. Again, in the previous video, we derived that the amount of token 0 that goes out, dx, is equal to shares divided by total shares times amount of token 0 in this contract. And likewise, for token 1, the amount of token 1 that goes out to the user is equal to shares divided by total shares multiplied by amount of token 1 in this contract. So first, let's implement these two part of the code. To get the amount of tokens locked in this contract, that's x and y, instead of using the reserves, we'll use the actual balance of the tokens. And this will make sure that the user gets a fair share of the tokens locked inside this contract. I'll type uint bal0 is equal to token0 dot balance of address this, and we'll do the same to get the balance of token1. uint bal1 token1 balance up. And then we can calculate the amount of tokens that is going to go out. Amount 0 is equal to s will be the shares to burn. Shares times balance of token 0 will be bal0. And then divided by the total supply. Total supply. Likewise for amount 1 is equal to shares multiplied by bal1 divided by total supply. And we'll require that both amount 0 and amount 1 are greater than 0. Amount 0 greater than 0 and amount 1 greater than 0. Otherwise, I'll say amount 0 or amount 1 is equal to 0. Once we know the amounts of tokens to transfer back to the users, let's now burn the shares of the user. And we'll do that by calling the internal function that we defined underscore burn from message.sender for the amount of shares from the input. Next, we'll update the reserve. So I'll say update. We're going to be transferring amount 0 from token 0. The balance of token 0 before transferring out is bal 0. Amount 0 will go out, so that will be minus amount 0. And the new reserve 1 will be likewise bal 1. That's the amount of token 1 inside this contract. Before we transfer out token 1, the amount that is going to be transferred out is amount 1. So, about 1 minus amount 1. Once we update the reserves, let's finally transfer the tokens to the user. So, I'll type token 0 dot transfer to message dot sender. The amount will be amount 0. And likewise for token 1. Token 1 transfer to message.sender amount 1. And that completes the function for remove liquidity.
And we now have a minimal example of a constant product AMM. Let's deploy this contract and call the functions add liquidity, swap, and then remove liquidity. I've copied the code for ERC20 from the internet and then deploy the two tokens, token 0 and token 1. I've also minted 1000 token for both token 0 and token 1 to user 0 and user 1. We'll say that user 0 is the liquidity provider. This will be the user that's going to be calling the function add liquidity and remove liquidity. And then we'll say that user 2 is a trader. So this user will be calling the function swap. So first, user 1 will add liquidity to the constant product AMM. I have not deployed this contract yet, so let's deploy the contract. This contract takes in two parameters, token 0 and token 1, which I've deployed over here. So I'll copy the addresses, paste it, and then deploy the contract. So once constant product AMM is deployed, user zero, user one will add liquidity to this constant product AMM. User one has both token zero and token one balance of 1000, which I've already minted. To add liquidity, user one will have to approve the constant product AMM to pull in the tokens. So it will approve constant product AMM for the amount 1000 and likewise for token 1 user 1 approves constant product AMM for the amount 1000 and then user 1 adds liquidity for the amount let's say token 0 is 1000 and token 1 is 500 and then hit transact Add liquidity was successful. So if we check the shares of user 0, I'll copy the address of user 0 and then check balance up. This will be greater than 0. User 1 has 707 shares. Reserve 0, that will be token 0 amount, is 1000 and reserve 1 is 500. Next, we'll switch to user 2 and this user will call the function swap to trade token 0 for token 1. So the first thing that this user will have to do is approve the constant product AMM to spend token 0. We'll reuse the inputs that we passed in previously. So spender will be constant product AMM for the amount, let's say 100. User 2 will be spending 100 of token 0 and then getting back some token 1. So let's call the function swap. Scroll down. And then we'll call the swap. Token name will be token 0. Paste it here. And the amount 100. And then call the function transact. And the function is successful. So if we check the balance of token 1 for user 2, I'll scroll up, copy the address of user 2, scroll back down to token 1 and then click on balance up. Before we call this function, I minted 1000 token one. After the trade, this balance up should be greater than 1000. And it is 1045. And lastly, we'll switch back to user one and then remove liquidity. I'll scroll down and then user one will call remove liquidity. How much share does user one have? user 1 has 707 shares so i'll copy this and then paste it here and then call remove liquidity and the function is successful so if i check the balance of user 1 this will be the amount of shares that the user 1 has in the constant product amm it is now equal to zero reserve zero how much do we have it's zero reserve one also zero and now let's check the balance of token 0 and token 1 for user 0. Sorry, for user 1. So token 1, I'll copy the address of user 1. And then we'll check the balance of user 1. I've minted 1000 token of token 0 to user 1. 
user 2 traded 100 token 0 for token 1 so that is why you see an extra 100 over here let's check the balance of token 1 for user 1 paste the address of user 1 again and then call balance up 955 before adding liquidity i minted 1000 tokens to user 1 and now this user has less than 1000 the amount that decreased was given to user 2 during the trade so that is why you see less than 1000 over here and that completes the demo for the constant product amm